குட் ஈவினிங் எஸ்பிரன்ஸ் வெல்கம் டு டெய்லி நியூஸ் அனாலிசிஸ் ப்ராட் யூ பை சங்கர் ஏஸ் அகாடமி டுடேஸ் டேட் இஸ் லெவன்த் ஜான்வரி டுவெண்ட்டி டுவெண்ட்டி ஃபோர் டிஸ்பிளேட் ஹியர் ஆர் த லிஸ்ட் ஆஃப் டாபிக்ஸ் வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு சி டுடே நவ் பிஃபோர் வி கெட்டிங் டு த டிஸ்கஷன் ஐ ஹாவ் அன் இம்பார்ட்டன் அனவுன்ஸ்மெண்ட் சங்கர் ஏஎஸ் அகாடமி இஸ் ஸ்டார்டிங் ப்ரிலிம்ஸ் ஃபிட்னஸ் டெஸ்ட் சீரியஸ் விச் இஸ் கால்ட் ப்ரீ ஃபிட் டெஸ்ட் சீரியஸ் அண்ட் த பேட்ச் ஒன் வில் பி ஸ்டார்டிங் ஆன் டுவெண்ட்டி செகண்ட் ஜான்வரி டுவெண்ட்டி டுவெண்டி ஃபோர் தேர் ஆர் டெஸ்ட் அவுட் ஆஃப் விச் 37 செவன் ஆர் ஹாஃப் டெஸ்ட் அண்ட் சிக்ஸ் ஃபுல் ரிவிஷன் டெஸ்ட் அண்ட் செவன் ஃபுல் டெஸ்ட் இட் ஆல்சோ இன்க்ளூட்ஸ் டென் சி சேட் டெஸ்ட் த டெஸ்ட் மோட் வில் பி கண்டக்டட் போத் ஆஃப் லைன் அண்ட் ஆன்லைன் ஸோ அதர் டீடெயில்ஸ் ரிகார்டிங் திஸ் டெஸ்ட் சீரியஸ் இஸ் கிவன் இன் த லிங்க் இன் த டிஸ்கிரிப்ஷன் கைண்ட்லி செக் இட் வித் திஸ் லெட் அஸ் ஸ்டார்ட் த டிஸ்கஷன் லுக் அட் திஸ் ஆர்டிகல் இட் டாக்ஸ் அபவுட் அ வெரி ஹை எனர்ஜி காஸ்மிக் கிரே இவெண்ட் அக்கர்ட் இன் டுவெண்ட்டி டுவெண்ட்டி ஒன் திஸ் காஸ்மிக் கிரே இவெண்ட் இஸ் நேம்ட் அஸ் அமா தேரசு So in this news article discussion first let us understand what is cosmic rays and then we shall see what is ultra high energy cosmic rays so what are cosmic rays see cosmic rays are invisible stream of energetic clusters coming from outer space and from the sun they include protons and alpha particles here alpha particles are nothing but helium nuclei with the two protons and two neutrons cosmic rays were first discovered in 1912 by victor franz hess Remember cosmic rays can be divided into two types. Firstly, those originating from beyond our solar system, they are called galactic cosmic rays. These rays originate outside the solar system from the events like supernova. Here supernova is a explosion that occurs when massive star nears the end of its life after running out of its energy. Secondly, high energy particles emitted by the sun also releases cosmic rays and they are called solar cosmic rays. So these are the two types of cosmic rays one is galactic cosmic rays and other one is solar cosmic rays understood remember only low intensity cosmic rays reach the earth surface this is because they smash into atoms of atmospheric gases and produce a shower of other particles during this process they lose most of their energy in the atmosphere itself so this is the reason why the discovery of amaterasu cosmic ray is most significant now let us see the applications of cosmic rays cosmic rays provides one of our few direct samples of matter from the outside of solar system so they are high energy particles that move through space at nearly the speed of light so it can tell about space and the universe in 20th century cosmic rays helped scientists to discover antimatter and the muons antimatter and muon are subatomic particles beyond proton neutron and electron so cosmic rays tells us about the chemical and physical makeup of universe it can tell us about how the universe has changed over time and what happens around the supermassive black holes most importantly they help us to understand unknown astronomical phenomena and new physical origins beyond the standard models so this is all regarding this discussion now let us move to the next topic look at this news article tamil nadu is planning to declare four new sites as biodiversity heritage site As we all know that Aritapatti in Madurai was the first biodiversity heritage site in Tamil Nadu. So there will be four new sites which will be selected from Tamil Nadu. So this is the article. In our discussion, let us see about biodiversity heritage site and Aritapatti site for our prelims exam. See first of all what is biodiversity heritage site. They are well defined heritage areas with unique ecologically fragile ecosystem. It can be terrestrial or coastal inland water or marine ecosystem know that under section 37 of biological diversity act 2002 the state government in consultation with the local body can notify a site as biodiversity heritage site we should know that nallur tamarind grove in bengaluru was the first biodiversity heritage site selected in india it is declared as biodiversity heritage site in 2007 At present there are 44 biodiversity heritage sites in India. So this is all about the basics of biodiversity heritage site. Now let us see the characteristics of these sites. They have species richness, high endemism, presence of rare and threatened species, keystone species, presence of wild ancestors of domestic species, etc. Now let us see the process of declaring a site as biodiversity heritage site. Firstly the state biodiversity boards may invite suggestions for the declaration of such sites moreover it can also receive suggestions from communities through gram sabha urban wards forest protection communities tribal councils etc 
know that all these process will go through biodiversity management committee then after several scrutiny state biodiversity board issue a preliminary notification after 30 days of draft notification there will be a public hearing and after this the announcement of biodiversity heritage site is done you should also know that declaration of such area as biodiversity heritage site does not put any restriction on the prevailing practices and usages of local communities so this is about the biodiversity heritage site now let us see about aritapatti biodiversity heritage site which is the only such site in tamil nadu it has rich biological and historical significance this site has presence of around 250 bird species including three flagship raptor species so these three species are lagar falcon shaheen falcon moneli eagle moreover this site is surrounded by a chain of seven hills that serve as a watershed it has 72 lakes 200 natural springs and three check dams know that anaikondan lake which is built during pandian kings in 16th century is also one among the lake in this region this aritapatti site also has several megalithic structures rock cut temples tamil brahmi inscription and jain caves in this area so this is all about the discussion now let us move to the next topic look at this editorial article it is about the recent conflict between india and maldives the article says that the tension between india and maldives was triggered by a series of tweets by few maldivian ministers and the main cause is the shift in maldives foreign policy the new president has prioritized relations with china and sidelined india the article urges both countries to reassess their responses emphasizing the significance of their historical ties The article also highlights the benefits of previous strong relationship amid rising nationalist sentiments. So this is about the editorial given here. In this context, let us answer a main question related to India Maldives relations. Now look at the question. The historical and geographical ties between India and Maldives are significant, but the expanding presence of China in Indo-Pacific region has become a source of concern. assess the strategic significance of maldives for india and explore how china's influence is affecting the relationship between india and maldives so this is the question the question is expecting us to address two things firstly we have to write about the strategic significance of maldives for india and then we have to write about how chinese influence is affecting india maldives relations this may look like a long question but it is a simple straightforward question in the introduction we can write about a general points about ties between india and maldives the maldives as india's closest neighbor has historically relied on india for essential support and assistance even during the british rule it relied on india for essential commodities currently the economic ties have expanded to include infrastructure projects trade partnerships and a bilateral usd currency swap agreement for example hanimado international airport development project and greater malay connectivity project the defense cooperation between india and maldives include joint exercises training for maldivian national defense force and collaborative efforts like operation cactus in 1988 even recently during the pandemic maldives was the first nation to receive vaccines from india under vaccine maitri initiative India also supplied essential medicines to Maldives under operation Sanjeevani so you can include these points in your introduction now coming to the body of the answer here we have to write about strategic importance of Maldives for India before answering this part first we have to know what is strategic importance the strategic important location refers to a place or an area that holds significant importance due to its advantageous position for military economic and political reasons so you must not restrict your answer only to the military importance you must address other aspects also now let us start with the military importance of maldives to india the first one is india's maritime security Maldives is strategically located in Indian Ocean and its stability is crucial for India's maritime security. It serves as buffer between India and potential threats coming from India's adversaries. Secondly, India views the Maldives as first line of defense against various security threats. Both countries collaborate to counter these challenges and contribute to regional stability. Now moving on to the economic aspect here you can mention that india has undertaken various infrastructure projects in maldives such as greater malay connectivity project and these projects not only contribute to the economic development of maldives but also enhance 
India's influence in the region. Secondly, Maldives is located at the hub of commercial sea lanes, which is running through Indian Ocean. So having a stable and friendly Maldives will ensure security for Indian trade. Now moving on to the political aspect. Maldives play an important role in India's strategic outreach in Indian Ocean. As part of India's broader vision for Indo-Pacific region, the stability in Maldives is essential for India. India seeks to strengthen its partnership in the region to ensure a secure and cooperative geopolitical environment. So these are some points regarding Maldives' strategic importance for India. Now let us see how Chinese influence is affecting India-Maldives relations. In this, you can first mention about the increasing Chinese influence. See, in 2011, China opened its embassy in Maldives. Since then, it has been trying to attract Maldives towards China's foreign policy. Firstly, the Maldives has received substantial investment from China and has actively participated in China's Belt and Road Initiative. China has provided funding and undertaken construction of several key projects in Maldives. Secondly, in 2017, Maldives and China signed a free trade agreement. This shows that Maldives and China are growing closer. Now, how this relation is affecting India? The new Maldives president came to power by taking anti-India stand. Normally, the Maldivian president will visit India as a part of their first bilateral visit. But contrary to this trend, the new president visited Turkey as a part of his bilateral visit. Also, the new president requested India to withdraw India's troops from the Maldives. The president also made a visit to China during the ongoing conflict between India and Maldives relations. So this shows his pro-China stance. So all these reasons are affecting India's friendly relations with the Maldives. So we have addressed the need of the question. Now coming to the conclusion part. In conclusion, we can mention that both India and Maldives should pass and reconsider their actions. Maldives cannot afford to provoke India considering its close proximity, economic strength and historical role as a primary security provider in India. Similarly, India should recognize the impracticality of exerting pressure on a significantly smaller neighbor. India should also use neighborhood first policy to reduce Chinese influence in Maldives. In addition to this, both India and Maldives should prioritize diplomatic solutions and cooperation over confrontational approaches. So in this way, you can end the answer. With this, let us conclude the discussion and move to the next topic. Look at this news article. It says that Tamil Nadu is not willing to ask Krishna water from Andhra Pradesh. This is because the reservoirs in Chennai have enough storage due to rains from Cyclone Michuang and Northeast Monsoon. So this is the crux of the news article given here. In this context, let us discuss in brief about Krishna River from our prelims perspective. See, Krishna River is an interstate river in southern India. It is the second largest river in our peninsular India. Now that the largest river in peninsular India is Godavari. Now what is the source of Krishna? Krishna rises in the western ghats at an altitude of 1337 meter near Mahabaleshwar in Maharashtra. Then it flows across the whole width of peninsula from west to east for a length of about 1400 km. It forms a fertile delta in Andhra Pradesh before draining into Bay of Bengal. Now let us see the drainage and tributaries of River Krishna. See the Krishna Basin extends over the state of Maharashtra, Karnataka, Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. Its total catchment area is more than 2.58 lakh square kilometer. Know that the basin is roughly triangular in shape and is bounded by Balagat Range on north, Eastern Ghats on south and by Western Ghats on west. Now let us see the tributaries. The right bank tributaries of Krishna, Ghat Prabha, Mala Prabha and Tungabhatra. The left bank tributaries are Bhima, Musi and Munneru. Note that Tungabhatra river is the largest tributary of Krishna river and the longest tributary of Krishna is Bhima river. Now let us see the important projects located on Krishna river. Firstly, Nagarjuna Sagar Dam. It is the world's largest masonry dam located in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana border. The other important dams are Almati Dam in Karnataka, Sri Salem Dam in Andhra Pradesh, Tungabhatra Dam again in Karnataka and moreover know that Koina River in which the Koina Dam is located is also a tributary of Krishna and this river flows in Maharashtra. This dam is known for 1967 dam induced earthquake which killed hundreds of people. So these are some of the important projects on Krishna River. With this let us conclude the discussion and move to the next topic. 
look at this article it is about a recent report called world employment and social outlook trends 2024 this was released by international labor organization the report says that global unemployment will increase in 2024 the report also stated that real wages declined in the majority of g20 countries as the wages increases and it failed to keep pace with inflation So this is about the news article. In this context, let us see some points about International Labour Organization. The ILO was established in 1919 by the Treaty of Versailles and initially it served as an affiliated agency of League of Nations. In 1946, it became the first affiliated specialized agency of United Nations. The headquarters of ILO is located in Geneva in Switzerland. ILO plays a significant role in promoting social justice and fair labor practices since its establishment. The organization brings together representatives from government, employers and workers of 187 member states to set labor standards. Now let us see the organizational structure of ILO. The ILO operates through three main bodies: International Labor Conference, Governing Body and International Labor Office. These bodies consist of representatives from governments, employers and workers. First let us see about International Labor Conference. This body sets international labor standards and formulates the broad policies of ILO. It is often referred to as International Parliament of Labor and it meets annually in Geneva. Next let us take the governing body. Serving as executive council, the governing body meets 3 times a year in Geneva. It makes policy decisions, establishes programs and budgets which are then submitted to International Labour Conference for adoption. Lastly there is International Labour Office. The International Labour Office acts as a permanent secretariat of ILO. It serves as a focal point for organization's activities. It prepares reports under the scrutiny of governing body and the leadership of director general. The ILO performs various functions to address social and labour issues. It works towards the creation of coordinated policies and programs aimed at solving social and labor problems. It ensures the adoption of international labor standards through conventions and recommendations and also monitor their implementation. It ensures the protection of human rights including the right to work, freedom of association, collective bargaining, protection against forced labor and protection against discrimination. Lastly, it conducts research and publishes work on social and labor issues so these are some important functions performed by international labor organization so this is all regarding this discussion now we have come to the prelims practice question discussion look at the first question krishna is a mighty east flowing river of peninsula india that rises from western ghats in karnataka yes this statement is correct musi river is one of the tributaries of river krishna yes this statement is also correct as we have seen in the discussion there are 13 major tributaries of which six are right bank tributaries and seven are left bank tributaries and the musi river is one of the left bank tributaries of krishna now coming to the second question look at the biodiversity heritage sites and the states in which they are present nallur tamarind grove it is in karnataka baramura waterfall it is in tirupura amarkantak yes it is in madhya pradesh aritapatti yes it is in tamil nadu so how many of the pairs are not correctly matched The correct answer is option B. Only two pairs. Now look at the third question. Consider the following statements with reference to International Labour Organization. It promotes internationally recognized human and labour rights. This statement is correct. India is one of the founding member of ILO. Yes, this statement is also correct. The third statement is incorrect. India has ratified all the eight core fundamental ILO conventions. India has ratified only six of the eight core ILO conventions. So it has not ratified the remaining two conventions and the two conventions which India has not ratified is freedom of association and protection of right to organize convention which is implemented in 1948, the right to organize and collective bargaining convention which is implemented in 1949. So these two conventions are not ratified by India. So the correct answer is option B, only two. With this we have come to the end of the discussion. If you like the video please share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to Shankar IS YouTube channel thank you